Hello, my name is Cal Moloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm here with my two friends who spread the message of freedom. And I'm Derek. I'm from VCU Anarchy, and I'm an anarchist, obviously. <laughs> and he has this awesome, cool new Facebook page. Um, share and subscribe. You guys uh, could also as well. We'll put the link at the bottom of this video. Link in the description. Please join up. Yeah. With uh, or like the Anarchy page and join up with the Conspiracy Club. That has just been launched. I, I'm Tyler Lloyd, I'm an anarchist. <laughs> I've been in a few of these videos if you guys haven't met me before. But yeah, it's officially a student organization here at VCU, the Conspiracy Club. Feel free to come and talk freely about whatever fringe belief in political and social philosophy you happen to come across. And um, yeah, let's get this starting. Spread an yeah. anarchy. <laughs> See you guys at the victory party. Take good care. Yeah, you can take the government opinion that cannabis is bad for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So if I were to smoke the plants, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, yeah. which any point of refuse or resist because I don't agree with that opinion, yeah. and tried to escape, I'd be met with more violence, tased, yeah. or sometimes shot, murdered. See, I don't understand, like, who the government even is, you know? Like, <laughs> that's, like, who are these, who's telling me what to do? I right, don't, strangers! I don't, I don't understand that concept. Right, you know? yeah, exactly. Or, great, great, or you're very close to you're very close to it. Okay, so then yeah. you see, uh, government is even found into more violence because there's no point can you say I yeah. do want to help the poor, mm. but I don't want to fund war, yeah. right? You have no freedom of economic choice. You still yeah. have to give up your property. Mm. You still have to give them your money. Yeah. You still have to and pay who your am I taxes. Giving it to? Like, what the yeah. <laughs> and it's, that's what I'm saying with the whole like violence and stuff like that. Right. I don't believe. I think it should be like one for all, you know. All right. Uh, like, all right. So, so we'll, we'll get there too. We'll get there too. We'll get there too. This, we're very, very close to what we're, we're actually about to discuss and further objectify what is government. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's, but that's the hidden violence behind government, mm -hmm. and that this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence yeah. to solve any problems, versus mm -hmm. so the plurality of nonviolent solutions. So you and I, and my friend here, already share. Yeah. Right. So, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's wrong, of course, right? It's more just like, I want to do what I want to do. Like, right. And I, if, if I'm not harming anyone, I don't see what the point is. It's, I, they're obviously just trying to take my work and right. use it for their own good, get me to work for them. Right. Like I saw a Facebook site the other day, someone was like going off about pretty much 4,000 something days of work, uh, days of your work life are going towards like some tomahawk missile. I, the government. Actually, I like that. Uh, that's a really interesting, professional uh, I way to pull it up that, for yeah. you. It's like actually really, you worded it really well. Uh, yeah, so pretty much like uh, half of your income stolen. You have no idea where that goes to. Exactly. And, and nearly half of that part of their taxes goes to hey. uh, funding uh, drone bombings of children overseas. Mm -hmm. Right? You put it really, yeah, you put it just like that. Uh, and so that's what they do then, that's what taxes said. It steals your productivity, steals your time, steals your work. Yeah, for something that I have nothing to do with. You have no Here choice says, where that goes. Yeah. In your lifetime, you will spend about 4,250 work days funding the government. If your average yearly income is around 60,000, you will give a million to the government. A Tomahawk missile costs a million, 500,000. So maybe, just maybe, if you put yourself in massive debt from student loans and work your ass off for 50 plus years, you'll be able to pay for the government to accidentally blow up a school in the Middle East because they thought there was a terrorist nearby. So get to work, people. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really uh, sober way of looking at it. And that's yeah. the truth. That's what exactly, exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, earlier we were talking about security and mm -hmm. protection from that. So that's what government has monopolized. Mm -hmm. right? So objectively what government is, is a monopoly on the services we already want. Yeah. They monopolize courts, judges, security, yeah. currency, roads, schools. Yeah. You yeah. don't have the freedom to cancel and subscribe as you would with a subscription service, you know? Yeah. With HBO or Netflix or, um, you know, and service provider. Yeah. Um, you um, said, well, I'm going to cancel, I'm going to subscribe, I'm going to go to a better competitor. Mm -hmm. But even then, you don't have the freedom against this monopolized service that the government provides, forces on you, to say, you know what, I want to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Yeah. Right? I'll offer you discounts, I'll offer you sales, I'll offer you, I know, first, you know, three months free, you don't have to pay no obligations, uh, find ways to help improve it. But with government, you know, yeah. they can't go bankrupt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you have to hold you in contempt of court with the judges that you pay his salary if he doesn't like what you're wearing. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in a lot of different facets and faculties of what the government is, that's the relationship that they have with you, mm -hmm. right? It's like uh, me is giving you um, 
Right. Me, me giving you a phone, right? Maybe a shitty phone, and you're forced to pay for that. Right? Yeah. You have no option, and this is the phone you have to keep with you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Like social security. Yeah. Right. You never, you never sign a consent form for that. You never agreed to that, but that's forced onto you before you were born. Yeah. And then, you know, when it's time for you to retire, you never have that. You know, ready, ready, available income for you, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of different ways that uh, these services the government has monopolized um, also robs you from your productivity, just like that guy was talking about, you know, mm -hmm. those productive days, you know, funding a lot of these unsustainable services like USPS going $16 billion in debt, mm -hmm. uh, so security along the same lines, <laughs> yeah. um, and they can't go bankrupt, they, they only go bankrupt when they try to siphon a lot more of your money and they, eventually when the whole thing starts to overburden itself uh, because they're unsustainable, the whole thing starts to collapse, just like um, the city of Detroit. Yeah. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, all right, cool. So you, you got that. Um, well, that's, that's I, I really like that quote that you're sharing with me yeah. earlier. Um, all right, so this principle that you and I already shared in the beginning yeah. against using buying to solve problems, yeah. that's called the non aggression principle, right? Yeah. You have to universalize it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so universalize to include anyone who claims whatever title or whatever color costume they wear or piece of paper bash they hold up. Sorry, it's wrong and immoral for any person to initiate force, <laughs> Yeah, right? That includes government. That includes yeah. people who claim to call themselves government, whoever they may be, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Because they're nothing but individual people, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then from that, you, you'll find that uh, you be universalizing that principle that to turn away from government, to turn away from that which so, contradicts your uh, moral traditions to begin with, what? Mm -hmm. right? It's uh, you find a very uh, hypocritical so stance is something that you already value in your so, uh, life that you don't use violence to solve problems, but that's the only way government knows how to solve problems, right? Yeah, I would say I've ever really yeah. solved the problem with violence. It's more awesome. just been perfect, right? Yeah. Somebody <laughs> before, like yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I knew it was yeah. like when I was young, so it's all right. So, um, hey, is everyone cheap? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm part of. Uh, we're part of a uh, non-political organization called Liberate RBA. It's mm. trying to turn to a community and turn away from government. Yeah, trying yeah. to find uh, rich, diverse, creative ideas to solve these problems and provide these services outside mm. of the monopoly of control the government has. Um, and you know, like Bitcoin, for example. You ever heard of Bitcoin? Yeah, actually. Yeah. 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 What do you have heard about it? Uh, I know is that some guy just got like millions off. Of it. <laughs> He bought like 25 worth a while ago. Right. <laughs> and then he like he forgot the password. I remember hearing about that. Yeah. He forgot the password and like he's like I got remember it. I bought some digital currency and you yeah. open it up, it's like now we're worth in the millions. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, digital currency. The government hates it because uh, they can't regulate it, they can't control it. Yeah. Uh, currency again, they monopolized it back in nineteen thirteen. Mm -hmm. Before 1913, we reached diverse different yeah. forms of commodities called money. Mm. Government outlawed competition, so you're only allowed to trade with the US dollar, and that's why it's lost over 97% of its value. And I still just don't even know like the hell the US government is. Like, what, what's the government? Like, right. who are these people? <laughs> I don't know. It's it, such a, I don't know, just a overused word that I don't understand. Right, it's, it's called the matrix. Yeah. Right, it's called the uh, the culture of government around us to, that we need strangers to tell you how best um, to match your need, to match your, your preferences, mm -hmm. right? But that's what government says. You're not a competent individual en enough to uh, provide a, um, a security service for yourself, so we're going to force this onto you. Yeah. You can't choose uh, a way to, to save money, so we're going to force this security onto you. Yeah. Uh, we're going to force, uh, and that's subjectively what, what they are, mm -hmm. right? They feel that you're not competent enough to make an uh, adult decision on how best to allocate your own resources yeah. and match and meet those, those needs that you have, right? Mm -hmm. And you give it off to strangers, politicians. It says, "I know what, how best to solve your needs and how best to match your preferences." Yeah. Right. A complete stranger you've never met. Yeah. Who has no care for you? Yeah. He's never been to your birthday parties. Yeah. <laughs> and then he raises your taxes and yeah. they take more of your income. Yeah. Right. And so I got the solution. I'm just going to need your money and that of your friends and your communities and of your neighbors. Yeah. Right. It's like, well, that's that's kind of like uh, that's what a criminal would do. You know, you call them for what they are. They are yeah. they're nothing but thieves. You know, yeah. it's uh, extortionists. Yeah. Extortionists. Yeah. Uh, so like, imagine like a uh, Geico trying to do that to you. It's like you, you call them out and see for what they are, right? Yeah. And then of course, um, if they didn't have a monopoly, all the competing businesses would say, hey, like Netflix tried to raise their prices overnight last year, and people say, oh fuck that, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> You're aware of that scam. Yeah. Um, but with government, they, they don't subscribe. And, and again, right. because they're regulating trade so heavily with the U.S. currency, they can actually take the GDP that you privately own just by the assumption that you're yeah. inevitably going to spend it. So you can't actually have tangibles because most people don't, right? Like no one invests in gold or silver anymore. Right. And those are deflating assets. So in a lot of ways, like you just see like this corporate hierarchy, you know, what's, what's Google pushing now? Almost a thousand dollars a stock. Yeah, yeah. It just keeps on rising because again, when you control um, central banking, you can manipulate the economy however you want. And in a lot of ways that is not 
at all capitalism. So what other country can I go to? We don't need to run away, right? <laughs> it should be the aggressors that should be moving out of here, okay. right? Yeah. It should be the extortionists, like uh, the ABC extortionists in Charlottesville that uh, that threw that girl into a cage because she had sparkling water. Yeah. Yeah, remember that story? Uh, Half a dozen police officers uh, came to her because she came in on, out of an ABC store. She was getting some stuff for a charity, but they suspected she had uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. like, this is it's a victimless crime anyways. Yeah. Um, and then they came, came running at her with their, their guns kind of drawn. She's in her car. She's freaking out because mm -hmm. uh, these are strangers. Again, you're like, who is the government? They're, they're nothing but strangers. She saw yeah. all these strangers approaching her. They weren't even in, uh, in their costumes, right? And uh, so she freaked out. She tried to escape. Mm -hmm. uh, she got pulled over by a cop. And uh, eventually they were told, yeah, those were ABC extortion. Instead of saying, like, my bad, we didn't know, I, we didn't really identify ourselves, I'm good, we're yeah. all coming at you as, like, you would imagine, like, criminals would come at you with guns yeah. drawn as you're coming out of a store in a shady parking lot. Um, and the way they responded to that, just like, well, we're going to throw you into a cage overnight. Yeah. So we kind of figured this well, stuff out. Well, that was after she face planted into the concrete. It was a yeah. felony stop, so when she did see the blue lights and a plot oh. comply. Yo! Dude. Yeah, but that's but that's how that's how they solve their problems. Um, so the so solution is to turn to our community. You know, united we can do something. Yeah. One by one, if we stop paying our taxes, sale, they'll pick you off. But if we have several thousand people here united with that on principle. Then we can do something about it. Then we can protect each other's home from being foreclosed because we didn't pay property taxes. Yeah. Um, this happened to a guy in D.C. up right up, right up the road. Uh, he paid off his house in full. Didn't really have a lot of money because he didn't pay 156 dollars in property taxes. The government, right? Um, put his house on a put a lien on his house, foreclosed it, and threw him off in the street. Right. So you don't even we can't even own your own home in, in, in government. You can't even own your own car if you pay prop, uh, vehicle taxes, right? And that's and that's uh, the nature of the matrix. Um, we don't have to run away. Again, it's not us who should be moving out of here, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the extortionists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Well, I've got pamphlets to the left. Are you, you're living that time, right? Yeah. We have a party this Saturday. Um, <laughs> well, it, it's a like it's a Pollock philosophical discussion. Have my friend um, uh, Herzon is going to actually uh, help people set up their own Bitcoin wallet, mm -hmm. so you can have some real currency. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the value of it. I believe is uh, nearing four hundred dollars now, mm -hmm. uh, versus like how much it would be worth compared to a dollar. Mm -hmm. So it's real sustainability, whereas the U.S. dollar in the currency keeps depreciating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. That's cool. Well, my name is Cal. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, this is my friend Derek. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government. That this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I, my, my friend here, already share. So, what are your thoughts on that? Everything you said has a valid point, but a uh, counter argument would be how would you suggest we take action against? All right, all right, all right. That's that's, that's, that's um. All right, so you acknowledge uh, two two main points really. Uh, first, you look what government is objectively. Government has uh, monopolized the services I want. Right? They monopolized uh, law. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on currency, on delivering pieces of paper, first class mail. You don't have the freedom to cancel. You don't have the freedom to unsubscribe as you would with like Netflix or for, like a telephone service. You don't have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services to say, I could provide a better form of security that's not going to throw people into cages for victimless crimes. I could provide a better service against those monopolists that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Mm -hmm. right? And then the second thing is that principle that those first three questions we were talking about using violence to solve problems is, is, is immoral, to initiate it is immoral, you universalize that principle. Right? doesn't matter what title then you claim or what color your costume you wear or, uh, or who you say you work for. Uh, this includes anyone, especially those who claim to call themselves the government. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't show me a government, your friends, um, the police without showing me individual people. Right? All the individual people exist, so you universalize that principle. And in, in, all, all over the world, like you do with theories of gravity, theories of thermodynamics, laws of nature. And then you come, you, you hold on to that principle. You have the integrity not to match with your beliefs and your ideas and your actions that it's wrong for anyone to initiate that violence, right? True. And then the last step is really just to turn to our community and to turn away from government. Start finding, like in our day to life, we have voluntary associations. So you believe in self-governance? Yes, yeah. So we, we don't need uh, this big government, like this, they have a monopoly on land. What, when you get rid of the idea of government, you open up a lot of risk diverse communities. Right, thousands of communities. True, but how would it? How would you deter? How would you deter violent acts? Because not everyone right, right, right. my point of view. Yeah, yeah. All right, you can still have security. 
you can still have law. Again, they monopolize law. So you move to like a community that you look at the rules then, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I like the rules, I like the concern, it's not that bad. I want to move it here to this community. Like these like this already kind of exist. Mm -hmm. Like golf course communities, homeowner association pays for the roads and for the security. But instead of that, you have thousands of them. You have like some of these already exist like in Florida, you know, 55 and older mm -hmm. communities. Um, and they take care of those communities. But they agree to those rules. So you can have like then a 420 friendly community, one right next door <laughs> that's not. True. Right, and those conflicting preferences won't overlap each against each other because you choose to live there. Though. Right, right, and that's so you how promote freedom of choice. Yeah, Free, yeah. real freedom of choice, and, and that's why we don't have people like Amish communities kind of exist in that same nature, um, and that's so instead of having one ge one huge forced community where we don't have the freedom to associate or disassociate. Uh, because then what politics is when you vote that politician forces his preference and idea onto everyone in a geographic region mm -hmm. right even against those who are against it or don't want that True. right so they eliminates this political warfare we have right it's no, no longer you're a Democrat you're a Republican you're a libertarian all that is resolved and we look at each other as individuals right that the only person who knows how best to run your life is you yeah. And then so you, that, that's really it. You end the monopoly of these services government has. You free up a market of thousands of people saying, you know what, I can provide a better form of security. I've been doing this for 10 years. Look at my track record. Look at my rating systems. Five stars out of five stars. No complaints. Um, better service of providing better roads. <laughs> that's not going to be like driving around the moon around here, right? Um, and that's what you end up having. Someone says, you know what, I could do it better than them. So instead of a mass government that dictates to citizens, you want citizen-run government in different areas. Yeah, I guess that people could call it. A, people could, could call it a government, uh, but at least it's consensual. Uh, kind of like multiple villages, man. Yeah, multiple. Yeah, thousands. There'll be thousands of communities instead of a, a state tax firm. So there'll be no taxes because it'd be voluntary, right? Mm -hmm. You have nearly half your income returned to you. Now you can you can choose where that can go and be spent, right? Not to drone bombing children overseas, right? You can choose and select. Uh, who can provide a better service? Who can create a Kickstarter campaign that says, I could do it better than the government, I can provide something that's, uh, that's going to be awesome, it's uh, creative and fun and terrific. Uh, because it's that competition that drives quality. It does. When government has no competition and the monopolies, cost always goes up <laughs> they and quality time. depreciates. Right? And that's really it. That's, uh, but, but that's, that's, where it's, that's how it starts. Right? It starts here at home in our own communities. For me, it starts here in Richmond. Right? It takes, uh, to, I guess, to look to look for and find courageous individuals to, to take that stand against that tyranny, to be united with the already shared values that we already hold together, right? Um, and then eventually, when we just have a few thousands, I uh, guess, strong here in Richmond, that's all you need. You don't need to really convince all of Richmond. Along the way, yeah, they'll see. Along the way, they'll, they'll understand the message. But for the most part, that's all you need to start protecting your own property. Like, uh, there's this guy in D.C., he paid off his house in full. He didn't have a lot of money anyways. Uh, but because he didn't pay $156 in property taxes, the government put a lien in his house, foreclosed it, and threw him in the street. Right? He didn't have anyone advocating him. He didn't have anyone, uh, community, to, to st standing up for him, right? To prevent yeah. his home being stolen from him. Um, and that's, but that's, so one by one, they can pick you off. But when you're united, then they can't, right? Um, and that's the organization, oh my God, not here. The organization I'm with, uh, Liberate RBA, is a non-political organization that's just to try to unite our community with these values and to try to turn away from government. Understandable. Yeah. That's your dot com right there? Yeah, yeah, I got Pappas. You should like be your on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I've, I've walked by him multiple times going to class, <laughs> and I've read his sign multiple times, and you know, I'm real open-minded when it comes to like different viewpoints, I don't want to just shun somebody because they have a sign like that. Yeah. So, I mean, if you give me a logical argument, I take it into consideration. Yeah, and that's the most uh, that we can ask, is uh, to find logical, rational ways to, to uncover truth, you know, to get there together. Um, and that's much in the same way, again, in our day to day lives, we don't use violence to solve problems. Let's start off with that, <laughs> right? Um, voluntary, consensual relationships. The relationship we have your government is not voluntary, nice. it's not consensual. You never sign for Social Security, <laughs> but still you're forced to pay for it, and when it's time for you to retire, you'll never have anything left for you. Thank right? you. What's your name, buddy? Cal. My name's Cal. Cal. Yeah. DJ, nice to DJ. meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Derek. Derek, nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. Nice talking to you. you take good care.